When I was a child, um, I was taken to the pictures. In those days, you had to be taken to the pictures. This was late 40s, early 50s. But then when I was able to go on my own, I saw everything. When I was growing up, of course, I didn't know what Ealing was. I didn't know that that was a studio or anything like that because, I mean, people didn't know those things. They didn't know what producers or directors did. They just didn't. You went because of the people in the cast. And seeing people that you loved, I mean, people really did feel a great deal of love for people who were in small parts. Uh, at the, the beginning of, of Kind Hearts, there's the hangman, Miles Mallison. Never had the privilege of hanging a duke. What a finale to a lifetime in the public service. My eldest brother, who was a docker, loved Mild Malison. He just loved him. And lots of people would go because those... They didn't know what they were called. They didn't know their names, but they'd just go. And if it was Margaret Rutherford, Joyce Grenfell, Alistair Sim, you just went anyway, because they were always fantastic. And going to see something like, um... The Lady Kills when I was 10 or 11, you didn't get the subtleties of it, but it was just the feel that you felt that it was right, that wonderful house, which was actually just built at the end of a street, you know, in King's Cross. It works at two levels. It works at a very simple level of um, a kind of revenge tragedy, but in reverse, they all kill each other and she ends up with all this money. But if you see it as an adult, what you actually see is something very subtle. All those men in the gang are all from different parts of society in Britain, and they're all failures. Oh, you shouldn't. You know, Professor, you didn't tell me the truth about yourself. It's really interesting, the subtext to, to that film, um, because we had, of course, just lost... We'd won a war, but we'd lost an empire. Um, so it's very interesting to see it in those historical terms. Alexander McKendrick came to teach. When I was at uh, film school and um, I said, oh, you know, do tell us about um, the Lady Killers. And he said, well, when I was doing it, um, Katie Johnson was very old. She was considered very old then, in her 70s. Mrs. Wilberforce? Yes. And it was difficult to get insurance for her. Um, and so she went to Sandra McKendrick and said, Mr. McKendrick, I'll pay for my own insurance. And he said, of course you won't, Katie. We'll get, the, we'll get it for you. Of course they got it for her. And when it came out, of course, it was a huge success. And he went to the distributor and said, you know, this is her only big success. And she's in her 70s now. It may be her last movie. Could her name go above the title? And in the West End, it said, Alec Guinness. Katie Johnson in The Lady Killers. And shortly after that, she died. And his eyes just filled with tears. But my heart, if I've got to choose between The Lady Killers and Kind Hearts, it's got to be Kind Hearts. A brief history of the events leading thereto, written on the eve of his execution by Louis Descoigne Mazzini, 10th Duke of Chalfont. Everybody raves about Alec Guinness, and it's a wonderful virtuosi performance that he gives. But that film would not work without Dennis Price's flawless interpretation of Louis. I want to talk to you for a minute. If you make a noise, I shall blow your head off at once. I mean, it's just flawless. Had it not been him, had it not been that good, it would have fallen down. But it is so utterly perfect. I mean, to knock off all these people. And at the end of the film, you want him to get away with it. It's just fabulous. It entertains on a very simple level, but it also has a deeper subtext. It's actually an attack on, on privilege and the arrogance and these people who think they have a right to rule and they don't have it. Um, so great comedy has an underlying meaning. Amberley Grofield, Mrs. Nift, the House of Commons yo-yo team. Well, I come from an ordinary working class family. I just happened to speak like the Queen Mother after she died. God knows how that arose. But when I was a child, you listened to the radio and they really did speak well. I heard these original recordings when I was researching for Long Day Closers and Distant Voices to Love. And I do love it when language is used properly. South, Southwest Gales. 
spreading from the west with rain and moderate... I, I especially enjoyed um, the, the lines from Count Hearts because the joy is the language. It's beautifully written. I couldn't bear my last sight of you to be that look of hatred you gave me as you went out from the trial. In view of the fact that your evidence had put the rope round my neck, you could hardly expect a glance of warm affection. It's beautifully written, and the, the scene that is simply breathtaking at the end when she goes to visit him in prison and they plan a murder without ever saying it. I mean, it's a fabulous piece of writing. Except for a miracle, like the other one we were talking about. So there it was. She would find the suicide note if I, in return, would murder Edith. So we now have two miracles in mind, do we? I mean, how can you plan a murder in prison? I mean, it's fabulously written, man. It's fabulous. Um, the use of language there is just, it's wildy and it's that good. It's as good as wild. And it's a perfect ending. Your Grace, I represent the magazine Titbits, by whom I'm commissioned to approach you for the publication rights of your memoirs. A memoir? What a way to end a film. <laughs> Just wonderful. And he goes, my memoirs. My memoirs. Uh, my memoir. My memoirs. Wonderful. A joy to watch every time. I always remember it in colour. I don't know. And I, it's black and white. And it's lovely black and white too. Um, but I always remember it in colour.